Like what we do? Support the channel by becoming a Patreon member. Link is in the description below. Thank you as always, and please enjoy the story! A week ago, I was in a car accident. I broke one of my legs and now I'm trying my best to rest up and heal. That means lots of laying in bed and watching whatever I want. Sitting up in my bed, I groan a little with the pain of moving. Mom! I whine, pointing at my cast. It's still hurting. Did you ask the doctor for something to help with it? I sure did, Aiden, she smiles, pulling two boxes from her purse. She holds them both out towards me, but hesitates to give them to me. It's like she can't remember which one I'm supposed to have. One of the boxes is pale pink, and the other a bright white. Well, I groan, desperate for pain relief. Looking a little vacant, Mom passes me the pale pink box. Here you are, she grins. Almost snatching the box from her hands, she frowns. I didn't have time for that. I peel open the box and swallow some down with water. Think you'll be up and about today or tomorrow, Aiden? Mom asks, placing a gentle hand on my knee. Maybe, I reply, buffing in frustration and reaching for my phone. You must at least try to get some exercise, she replies, rubbing my knee. You'll get fat if you don't. Okay, Mom, I groan. I don't feel like it right now. A week later, knocking on my door and then instantly entering, Mom is holding a tray of food. She places it next to me on the bed. How are you feeling, sweetie? She asks, passing me the pain relief in the pale pink box. Swallowing a few more down, I shake my head. The pain still hasn't gone away and it's beginning to annoy me. Taking extra doesn't seem to help at all. Still not feeling any better, I complain. I've got an awful itch around my chest and my thighs seem to be swelling. Is that normal? Putting the back of her hand against my forehead, she gives me a gentle smile. You don't have a temperature anymore, she replies. That's a good sign. I shrug my shoulders as she moves her hand off my head. I guess that's good, I say, reaching for the glass of drink she'd brought me. I'm just so itchy on my chest, it's really annoying. Itch it then, sweetie, she answers standing and walking to my door. Anything else you need? I look over at her, and hair falls into my eyes. Frustrated, brush it away and sigh. You any good at haircuts? I joke, brushing my messy hair back with my hand. I'm in desperate need of a trim. <laughs> I can see that, she giggles. Well, maybe soon you'll be ready to go out of the house. Then we can go get your haircut? I feel that was a long way off so I grab my phone to ignore the question. Mom gets the hint and gently closes the door as she leaves. The week after, having ventured downstairs, my sister Phoebe helps me onto the couch. As I get comfortable and rest my broken leg flat, she grabs the TV remote and sits with me. Flicking through the channels, she puts on a fashion program. Fee, I moan, stretching my hand to take the remote from her. Please put something else on. Phoebe quickly moves the remote away and glares back at me. No way, she replies. If you want the remote, come get it. Gritting my teeth, I hadn't the energy to fight with her. Although I'd just taken my pain relief, the itching on my chest was getting worse and my swollen backside was making it difficult to move. We'll do you some good to learn about fashion, she continues, giving me a mocking expression. You serious? I reply with a long sigh. Yes, she exclaims. Your clothes are barely fitting you anymore. I looked down at myself. Sadly, she was right. With the lack of exercise recently, I put on a lot of weight around my chest and hips. I could feel my clothes stretching over the weight I've been gaining recently. You know I'm right, Phoebe says with sass as I look up at her. Maybe some pants that actually fit your backside too. You look like you're about to bust out of those. Shifting uncomfortably, I frown and settle in to watch the fashion program. After a while, I start to get concerned about my mental state. I engaged in conversation with my sister about dresses. I think she was just as freaked out as I was. Another week passes. Aiden, Mom groans, holding out a pair of my sister's sports shorts. Look, since you've put on so much weight around your hips, you'll have to wear these for now. 
I turn up my nose at the prospect. No way, I complain, pushing the purple shorts away. Why can't we go buy some bigger clothing while I'm healing? I'm not going to have this wait forever, you know. Waiting for mom to answer, I scratch at my chest. It had almost become like a guilty pleasure of mine, scratching underneath the fat I'd gained her on my chest. I don't like the teasing that I'm getting my own breasts, though. Mom and Phoebe are being really mean with that. Offering me bras to wear is not funny either. Look, Mom replies with a stern expression, shoving the shorts back at me. You get your cast off in about a month. I'm not buying you more clothing that's just going to get thrown away when you get back into shape. Snatching the shorts out of her hand, I huff in frustration at her. I'm sorry, Aiden, she says, pulling a disapproving face. You know we are hard up for cash since your accident. Turning to look away sharply, knowing that she's telling me the truth, my long hair annoys me by covering my face and getting in my mouth. Ah! I whine, flicking my head to get it from my face. Can we just get me a haircut already? Replying to my frustration with a shake of her head, Mom gives me another disapproving look. I booked for you to go to the salon this week, she moans. Did you go? No, you did not. Brushing the remaining hair from my face, I look up at Mom and frown. I wasn't feeling up to it, I answer. What do you want me to do about it then? Mom instantly replies with a shrug. Can you ask Phoebe to come in here and tie my hair up again? I bashfully ask, picking up my phone to end the conversation. The week after that. What are you doing? Mom awkwardly questions, staring at us both from the hallway. Both me and Phoebe look over at her and smile. I'm brushing Aiden's hair. Phoebe then replies, rubbing a soft brush through my hair. Sitting on the floor in front of the sofa, with my legs stretched out, it felt great to have her give my hair so much attention. At first, I hated the idea, but after a few times, I'd really started to enjoy it. Who knew long hair could be kinda... fun? Clearly holding back a giggle, Mom walks up and looks at the TV program we were watching. You guys are... really starting to bond watching this, aren't you? She comments. Focusing on the TV, we both casually nod in agreement. That's when Mom looks down at what I'm wearing. Aiden, she complains, are you wearing your sister's tank top? I look up at her and shrug. Yeah, so what? I flippantly reply. Phoebe suggested it help air out my chest and stop it from being so itchy. Giving me a confused look, she walks out of the room. I'd never wear those heels with a dress like that, Phoebe snarks at the TV. I couldn't help but agree with her. The model looks so very silly with those open-toed heels. I'd have worn stilettos, I reply, itching at my chest. Phoebe instantly stops brushing and leans over my shoulder. I feel her looking down at my body. It's really weird, you know, she says, pointing at me itching myself. You seem to be putting so much weight around your chest and backside, but losing weight around your arms and shoulders. Please don't make me wear a bra again, I moan. I'm not, she innocently replies. It's just very strange. Yeah, I answer, reaching for my pain relief, and I'm still getting pain from my leg. The next week... Okay, I set down the phone to my friend. See you soon. As I swipe the call closed, Mom comes steamrolling up behind me. Phoebe, she calls out, can I borrow some of your makeup? Facing the window, I turn around and look at her with anger. Mom! I complain. I'm not Phoebe! As I see my mom's face go bright red, her mouth opens just as wide as her eyes. Oh my god! She replies. I'm sorry, Aiden. I heard you talking on the phone and you sounded just like Phoebe. I frown in response. I know I've put on weight, grown long hair, and been forced to wear her clothing, Mom! I complain, looking down at my cast. Can't you see the cast on my leg? Is that not a dead giveaway? Bringing her hand up to cover her mouth, I could see she had made a genuine mistake. Still, that didn't stop me from feeling annoyed. I'm sorry, Aiden, Mom answers, reaching up to touch my face gently. I heard her voice, and from behind, with your hair up like her, you two look so similar. I don't sound like Phoebe, I huff in reply. Watching my mom give me a comforting smile, something my friend just said came to the front of my mind. Giving my mom a confused look, 
I shake my head in disbelief. Wait, James just said I sounded weird on the phone too, I exclaim. He did? Mom replies. Maybe you're coming down with something. Yeah? I meekly reply, rubbing up my throat. I have been up most nights with the itches. There we go then. Mom chirps, giving me a kiss on the forehead. Do you know where your sister is? In her room, I answer softly. I've just been in there to borrow some stuff, so she's defo in there. A week later? Adjusting the fit of the bra Phoebe had lent me, I'm glad my fatty chest is controlled as we sit waiting for the doctor to arrive. I caved in a few days ago. She told me it would be more comfortable, and seeing as I'm already wearing some of her clothes, it wouldn't really make any difference. You okay? Mom asks, touching my leg and giving me a smile. I know this is your first time you've been out of the house, and your body has changed a lot. Hopefully the doctor can help. Thanks, Mom, I nervously reply. Ah, <sighs> that voice of yours, she continues, shifting in her seat. I thought that would have gone better by now. Seems to have gotten worse. Make sure you tell the doctor. As I open my mouth to agree, the doctor opens the door and greets us both with a worried expression. Miss River, he says, greeting my mother and sitting behind his desk. I have good news and bad news for you. We both lean forwards as he flips open his charts. Aiden, he grins, looking at me directly. That leg of yours is healing very nicely. We've got the scans in, and I'm happy to report that you'll have your cast off very soon. Turning to grin at my mom, I'm excited to get up and about with freedom. Mom doesn't look back with the same sort of expression. She looks extremely worried. What's the bad news then? She asks, turning to face the doctor, leaving me feeling terrified for the answer. The doctor flips through his chart some more, and then nervously rubs his forehead. I'm almost leaving brown stains everywhere, waiting for him to talk. Aiden, he says softly, clearing his throat. Your body has gone through some curious changes, hasn't it? I look down at the breast-like forms held in my sister's bra. I then look up and cautiously nod. Fat deposits have moved, growths on the chest, softening of your skin and voice, he continues, looking down at his charts. As he folds closed his charts, he takes his glasses from his face, then puts them down on his desk. Rubbing his eyes, he frowns. I'm not sure how this has happened, he explains. Aiden, you are going through a second puberty. Instantly, both me and mom stare at each other in shock. What? I screech, turning to look in his direction. These growths, he says, pointing at my chest, that's breast tissue. Feeling the blood drain from my face, I have no words to express my feelings. I'm terrified and confused. Your voice and skin have also softened to be more feminine. Your body has changed. Your fat stores to around your backside and hips, just like a woman. We found high levels of female hormones in your body. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but the effects are permanent. What? Mom yells thumping her hand on the desk in front of her. So you're telling me my son's going through female puberty? That's right. The doctor calmly replies, I'm launching an investigation straight away into what's happened. My colleague has offered to counsel and look at the next steps for Aiden. Completing gender reassignment is also an option, if you want it. I look over at my completely petrified mom. She looks at me just as worried, I'm turning into a girl? I screech. The doctor then coughs and leans back in his chair. I see you're wearing female garments and have styled your hair like a girl. He comments. This might be a blessing in disguise for you, Aiden. A new start.